huge opportunity for the Chasing Pack out in the Championship as just three points separate first from eight. Who's going to be leading the charge in the Championship after this weekend's matches? We'll take a little look next. prediction show today we took a look at match day number 16 out of the championship and we'll get to that in just one second if you're new to the channel smash your subscribe and keep your bang up to date with all things papa knows later championship later whoa boop, boop, really. we got it all here in a bloody car that's right of course we are back uh, and home, snowing, Christmas decks are up. I'm ready for this weekend's actions. Are you? We're going to talk about that in just a second. One big, big shout out, of course, to the patrons working behind the scenes. That's right. Thank you very, very much for supporting the, the channel behind the scenes. I do appreciate that. Uh, we're trying to get our numbers up to 25. We were close. We were so close. And I need to, over the next day or two, when I get my chance to just sit back and do nothing, and have a little look at those patrons, do an actual roll call to see who is still around with us. I do, I do appreciate those guys who are still with us. But we're trying to get our numbers up to 25. We're, I think around about 19 something like that so we, we've lost we've took a bit here i'm trying to i don't know it's going to be a big old push to get to 25 but if you are interested in becoming the latest member of the gang check out the links down below uh, patreon.com forward slash overseas i really would appreciate that and again it kicks us on further and again it gives me the chance to, the ability to maybe kick on further uh, to improve the quality of the channel I've got a big year next year humongous year might not be for the, this season but 2021 is a long old year and i've got the big plans for next season whether depending on wherever we are in the championship of course if we are in the championship. Anyway, enough jibber jabber. Let's get into it. Of course, take a look at how we all got on last time around, then shall we? Uh, yep, the championship into into top gear games coming thick and fast. Cannot take your foot off. Uh, not for you in the shit face gang. Five nine straight face called Templos. Don't even go there. Uh, let's take a look at it then, shall we? Of course, the games that took place. On Tuesday and Wednesday night, the first and second of December. Cardiff three 0 winners over Huddersfield. Big result that. Keith Moore with a couple of goals, Robert Glatzel as well. Again, just shows you, uh, you know, you're not too far away from your next win, as Cardiff showed it here. I actually remember the one they were myself, not too shabby. Uh, Bournemouth, though, big losers this weekend. Uh, Preston 3 0 up on this one, uh, ultimately hanging on for 3 uh, 2. Tom Barkus and Scott Sinclair with a banger. Patrick Bauer as well to give Preston a 3 0 lead. Junior Stanislas, ex Dingle there. Sam Surridge, uh, consolation goal for Bournemouth. Actually, remember the 2 0 win for Bournemouth. Shame on me in the Battle of the Bees, part one. Uh, in fact, it was the only Battle of the Bees, uh, and it was uh, Barzi coming out top with a 2-1 win over Birmingham at St. Andrews. Uh, Corley Woodrow from the, from the penalty spot, Callum uh, Styles as well. Scotty Hogan, first goal in a long, long time for Birmingham there. 1-1 for me. Shame on me. Of course, the Wayne Rooney uh, FC taking on Coventry. 1-1 uh, in the end. Still no respite for Derby at the moment. Colin Kazan Richards getting his first goal uh, as a Ram. And Gustavo Hamhamer with a late, late, late winner or equaliser. Must feel like a winner. For commentary, I actually remember the one who went for Wayne Rooney FC, but I was mugged off. Uh, QPR, they were they lost at home to Bristol City. Naki Wells came back to bite them in the arse there with a 2-1 win. He was amongst the goal scorers. Adam Nagy as well, with Robert Dickey up the scoring for QPR. 2-1, I went the other way. Shame on me. Shame on bloody me. Of course, rather against Brentford, ended up as a 2-0 win for Brentford. Uh, this was also on Tuesday night. Ivan Tony on the score sheet from the penalty spot. Marcus Frost as well. Mikko Miller getting himself sent off for Rotherham. Into Wednesday night, Middles were 2-1 winners over Swansea. Big result that to turn the table uh, around. Put a bit of chaos in the Duncan Watt one with a couple of goals there. Of course, uh, ex, uh, ex Mackham now, of course, uh, playing for the red half of Tine side, T side, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Yada, Yandanana on the score sheet for the first one's the consolation goal. Of course, the game of the weekend, well, the midweek was Rovers. 2 1 last minute.com win over Millwall. Goodness gracious me. Harvey Elliott with a Bobby Daz the banger, 25 minute on the clock. Scott Malone, though, with a banger of his, of his own on the 34th minute before Adam Armstrong stole the show right at the death with a scrappy effort, but it's okay. They all count as Rovers came out top of the 2 1 win. I'm on with a 2 0 win, not, not too shabby. Luton Town, though, surprise of the surprise result of the week uh, with a 3 1 win over Norwich. George Moncur on the score sheet. Uh, Matty Pearson, James Collins with the third, the third goal to put the cherry on the top. Uh, actually, I remember the 1 1. Emiliano uh, Boyenda on the score sheet for Norwich as uh, the leaders prior to this uh, lost. Uh, Forrest against uh, Watford end up all square. No goals there. Actually, I remember the 1 0 win for Forrest. Uh, Tony Poulis keeps on grinding out the results. Just a 1 1 draw against Reading. Uh, goal scorers on the day on that one. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday, uh, Callum Patson on the score sheet, Lucas Jow as well for Reading, Liam Shaw got himself sent off, fifth red card already for Sheffield Wednesday, and wrap it up there, 1-0 uh, win for Stoke, oh, where can, as you can see I did shit uh, this weekend, the one who go for Stoke, Nick Powell of course, uh, League One's second best player uh, behind Bradley Dakarino of course, 
That's a, that's a rivalry from yesteryear. Ah, oh, so let's take a look at the situation out in there. I did three. Got three. Shit. Uh, Norris lead the charge by 28 points on the board. Bournemouth are in second with 27 points, as do Watford, as do Reading, as do Bristol City, and Brentford are in sixth with 26 points. Swansea in seventh as well. Uh, Stoke at 20, 25 points, and Rovers in ninth spot and, uh, again. And a win for us this weekend potentially could shoot us up to second, but we'll see. A uh, lot of teams above us. In fact, mathematically, Again, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not going to break it down too much. Anyway, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! I wasn't finished. I was not finished. Uh, Derby, of course, heading into this. Uh, on the flip side with, uh, you know, in, in bottom spot, eight points on the board. Uh, Wickham Wanderers there in uh, 23rd spot with 10. Uh, Night Forest are in there with 13. That's on paper. Of course, Sheffield Wednesday have a points deduction still. Um, and it's, they, they're actually on to uh, nine points this season. So they're still in the drop zone. So this is this is just on performance basis. Look at it, uh, your picker range then, of course, with a live action prediction league coming at you. Uh, recap of the criteria. You know the drill. There it is. Let's get into it, of course. Take a look at Aztec, Marky B. Mark. Who I believe is a patron, or I can't really remember right now because his name flip flops around a little bit. But uh, I think he's a patron. But he did all right. Uh, Mr. Norris did uh, poo. Harry did shocking. Yanni Buster did bits. Ivan Stringer did poop, just like this guy. So did Damien Heaven. He did shit. Uh, Ultra Mirror, though. Well done to you, brother. Well done indeed. Uh, full stop did bits. Uh, Shepard also had a not a shocker, just like me. Okay, didn't do okay. Tristan Twenty Four also did poop. And Fizz and Hong shocker Rooney. Uh, Tom Stainer did all right. Mini Arca not too bad. Oh, a guy named Bob Warzo did bits. And Russell Frost. Also had a nice one there. Welcome to you. Roberto Hollis did bits. Alex Werner, not too shabby. Desk uh, Keneally, not too shabby. We are QBR did poop. Jacob Loring, not too shabby. Gaming Charlie did bits. And Gethin Tasker, shit a Rooney. Uh, Shane O'Donnell, not too bad to you, brother, in the corner there. Who puts him in the corner? I do. Cody Caho, not too bad, brother. Modern uh, Mitchell Shoney, not too shabby as well. Natho, uh, better than his team. He did all right. Yeah, Jockey Jacobson also did better as well. And Omar Esquivel, he did shit just like this guy. And LG and Cow also did better, very well indeed. And that's those, the, the board there. But this is the leaderboard as it stands. Geffen Tasker, Damien Heaven, shut your eyes. Uh, here is your leaderboard right now. Aztec Marky Mark leads the charge. I think he's a patron. Uh, I put him up there. I need to check. I need to do a roll call. Alex Weller in second spot. Shane Donovan, uh, Donovan as well up there in the top two. Uh, with Cody Caho, Mitchell Shoney, not too shabby either. Joko Jacobson as well. And then Elgin Cow inside the top ten. Also, Russell Frost, Ultra Open Murant, and the Chasing Pack. Uh, so that's just week 15 and week 15 alone. What about the overall leaderboard? Ignore my score right there. Coming at you thick and fast. Uh, your leader. You bow down to your king. It is Shane O'Donnell. Respect to my patron right there. Well done, well done, well done. Actually, Jockey Rackerson also not too far away either. And Russell Frost in the top three. It's your gold. It's your silver. It's your bronze. It's Shane O'Donnell at the moment leading the bloody charge indeed. But again, that's, it's still a long, long, long ways away uh, before we find out who is the overall kingpin. But at the moment, you got to bow down and respect Shane O'Donnell. He, if, if the season wants to end today, if a COVID rapid release wants to happen once again, guess what? Shane O'Donnell will be your king and you would respect him. Uh, just like I respect him right now. Uh, so let's take a look at it. And of course, the next round of matches, match number 16, kicking all off on Friday night. It'll be Barnsley up against Bournemouth in the Battle of the Bees. Now, these two sides play each other 16 times in the past. Six wins apiece and four bloody draws. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, heading into this. Uh, we'll take a look, also look at the, the last six in just a second as I queue up the odds on this one. We want to know the odds. Uh, the last six is one for Barnsley, three for Bournemouth, and two bloody draws. That's like a picture of the at Oak Hills back in uh, March 2014 in the Championship. It was a 1 0 win for Bournemouth. Stevie Cook on the score sheet for uh, Bournemouth in a 1 0 win. Heading into this, Bournemouth actually got clean each sheet in the last three away matches against Barnsley in all competitions. They also scored at least two goals in the last five. They come into this, just one defeat the past five for them. That was against uh, Preston. Uh, on the flip side, Barnsley uh, winning three at the past five for them, losing to Rovers and to Brentford not too long ago, but they come to this on the back of a win against Birmingham, of course, in the last Battle of the Bees. They've actually had probably three Battle of the Bees on the bounce. Uh, Manning it to this 11 4 for Barnsley, 5 to 2 short. Even Stevens, of course, for Bournemouth. Bournemouth coming to this in second and win for them. They could go. Tell them us, tell them us. Oh, yeah, tell them us. Uh, of course, Barnsley coming to this in 14th spot and win for them. They could actually go as high as 12th in the table. All eyes on this one Friday, the 4th of December. And I'm going with a draw on this one, 1 1. Barnsley are a different beast these days. They were tough opposition at Ewell Park. Uh, when they're at home, I think they'll feel a little bit more comfortable with themselves. And I think they'll get something out of this. Uh, I, doubt, I doubt it'll be the win, but I think all eyes on this one will be a draw. Uh, the early kickoff on Saturday on St. Nicolaus Day. Get your shoes outside because you never know what's going to be delivered. Will you get a nice gold nugget of three points or will you get a turd in your in your shoes? Well, let's take a look at it then. Of course, the last, uh, these two side pitches are the 43 times in the past. 14 wins for Reading, 19 wins for Forest, and 10 draws. Uh, the last six, these two wins for Reading, one for Forest, and three bloody draws, including a draw last round, which was back in uh, the Shearwood Forest, of course. It was a 1 1 draw back in January 2020. However, last time I picture that Adam Chase, he was also a draw. It was a 
uh, back in uh, uh, also January 2020. They've played back-to-back -back games in the month of January, in the month, uh, in the year of 2020. Ben Watson on the score sheet in the 96th minute uh, to give Nottingham Forest the lead and probably thinking that they bagged the three points before. Tobias Figueiredo, uh, own goal, giving Reading a share of the spores in the late, late, late drama there. Heading into this Forest, uh, failed scoring six of the last eight matches away from home. They come into this uh, without a win in four. On the flip side, Reading just one win in six. And of course, that win was against Bristol City a couple games back. Uh, look at the bookies' odds on this one then, shall we? Reading are actually 11 8 for the victory, 9 4 is your 2 to 1 is your Forest. Of course, Chris Shooting's boys these days. Forest coming to this 21st in the table, mathematically on paper. They're out of the drop zone, but a win for them, they could actually go as high as 18th in the table. Uh, Reading coming to this 4th, and guess what? A win for them. They could go to the box, the box. Oh, yeah. Couple of bots with a big fat W on this if they were to get it. I think they'll get I think they'll get a draw out of this one. Hewton's trying to grind out the results and they'll grind out another one here. Uh, again, all eyes on it on a Saturday afternoon or evening or morning, depending on where you are in the world. And next up, another Battle of the Bees. It's Bristol City against Birmingham City. It's the Battle of the Bee Cities. Uh, these two side pages are the 64 times in the past. 15 wins for Bristol City, 32 wins for Birmingham City, and 17 draws. Of course, the last six, these two wins for Bristol, three for Birmingham, and one bloody draw. Uh, the last uh, time they played each other was, in fact, in Bristol, back at Thrashton. Gate. It was back in uh, uh, February 2020, pre-lockdown. 3-1 uh, win for Birmingham, it was. Scotty Hogan was he on form? He was. Andres Wyman, Big Fat OG, and Lucas Chikabowitz on the score sheet, with Jamie Patterson getting uh, the only the opening goal for Bristol City. Heading into this, uh, Birmingham actually... Uh, yeah, don't know. Don't know. None of that. None of that junk. Uh, Birmingham coming in. It's just one loss of the past four for them, but without a win in six. Only three wins so far this season. On the flip side, Bristol City, one of the form teams in the division at the moment, just one defeat the past six for them. But if you want to look at it a different way, two wins of the past four. How about that? Does that make it feel a little bit better for you, Birmingham fans? Heading into this, all eyes on them. No, not all eyes on this. 11 to 10 for Bristol City, 23 to 10 is your draw. 5 to 5 to 2 is your Birmingham on this bad boy. Of course, coming into this Bristol City army in fifth, and mathematically, they could. Oh, turn the box, turn the box. Oh, yeah, turn the box. With a big fat W. Of course, Birmingham coming to this in 18th spot, and for them, they could go as high as 14th in the bloody league. I've gone with Bristol City on this one to continue their good form, heading into the Rovers match midweek. Uh, next up, of course, we have Coventry up against Rotherham, of course, last season. These two sides were in League One. These two side pitches are 24 times in the past. Uh, 10 wins for Coventry, 7 wins for Rotherham and 7 bloody draws. The last 6, 2 wins apiece and 2 bloody draws including a draw last time around at St. Andrews slash Rico slash Coventry. I don't know where they were playing. Uh, it was a one more drop back back in February 2020 with uh, Freddie Lata 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 on the score sheet and of course Matt Gooden on the or Gooden on the score sheet there uh, for Coventry in a one more draw back in February. Heading into this, Rotherham actually lost the last 4 away matches in the Championship and they've also conceded these 2 goals in the last 3. They're coming to this just one win and six. Same can be said for Coventry, but if you want to look at a better Coventry fans, unbeaten in the last four, picking up three draws and a win to boot. On the flip side, heading into this, what do we have on this? We have the bookies odds on this one. What do we have? Six to four for Coventry, nine to five is your Rotherham, and nine to four is your draw. Rotherham coming to this in 20th spot and a win for them. They could actually go as high as 18th. Coventry coming to this in a 19th spot and a win for them. They could also go as high as 17th in the bloody league. Coventry is good these days. They're grinding out the results. They're getting some good points and they're in a good bit of form. I'm going with a 1-0 win for the hosts. Uh, next up, we have the game of the weekend. And you can catch a watch along, I believe, on this one with Brentford against Rovers. This is the Battle of the Bees again. I've got extensive coverage on this one. I've got match preview. Uh, we'll have it, reviews, reactions, and all that kind of stuff. And again, two of the top scoring strikers on this one. It's going to end a draw, a nil nil. It's going to end a nil nil. Uh, but anyway, heading into this, of course, these two sides are 33 times. Of course, 11 wins for Brentford, 17 wins for Rovers, and five bloody draws. We like playing against these guys for whatever reason. Heading into this, though, the last six is one win for Brentford, four for Rovers, and one draw, of course, including a draw last time round at Brentford, which was their old stadium. It was a 2 2 draw back in February, of course. Goal scores Adam Armstrong with a couple of goals last time around. Uh, Ollie Watkinson said Ben Rama on the score sheet there for Brentford last time out. Uh, heading into this, Brentford actually kept clean sheet in five of the last seven matches and also won the last three matches. Is Rovers also winning the last three as well? Um, Rovers coming to this. I'm beating in the last six. Wow, wow, we wow. Uh, and of course, they top the form table as it stands. Brentford not too far away either. Winning three and drawing three are the last six as well. So, two really good form teams at the moment. Uh, coming into this, uh, Brentford are your favourites 20 to 19 on for the victory. 29 to 10 is your Rovers, 12 to 5 is your draw. We've been playing ropey dopey kind of football recently, but getting out of the results. Coming to this in ninth and win for this, we could go second. Of course, Brentford coming to this in sixth and win for them, they could go. Turn the box, turn the box. Oh, yeah, turn the box from Brentford. Yeah. Big question marks will remain around the Rovers team for this one. Will Brentford, uh, will Bad Boy Brereton be fit and raring to go? I don't I don't think so. I think he's probably out for this one, regardless of the scan results. I think he's out. But what about the Dakarino? Is he back? Is he back? Can we start to get excited about the Dakarino return? Can it be? Will it be? 
Will it be today? Will it be this match that the Master comes back? I don't know. Probably not. I think he may make a cameo on the bench. I just think, I don't know. I'd love to see him uh, very, very soon. I've gone with on this one. Just a repeat on last year. 2-2, but in a different venue, of course. New, new, new stadium against fans allowed back in some parts of the country. I don't know the deal. I know Rovers haven't got any fans. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have fans, but we just haven't, fan, we haven't got fans allowed in. You know what I mean? Bradford, I think they, they've got fans. Uh, next up, of course, we have Millwall taking on Derby County. Of course, now these two side are 54 times in the past. 20 wins for Derby, 19 wins for... Sorry, 20 wins for Millwall, 19 wins for Derby, and 15 bloody draws, of course, between these two sides. Last six sees three wins for Millwall, uh, two for, for Derby, and one bloody draw. Uh, last round at uh, the Den, it was a 3-2 win for Derby. Back at uh, London, Louis Sibley on the score sheet with a hat-trick, of course. Matt Smith and John Dardy, but Bobson on the score sheet. Heading into this Derby, we actually failed to win the last 11 matches. They're in a bit of trouble at the moment, Derby. Uh, back to back games, though unbeaten in the last two, uh, drawing those last two, of course. On the flip side, uh, Mill will come to this, just one defeat the past six, but they're drawing the other five, so grinding out the results, too little, too late. Of course, heading into this, of course, 21 to 20 for Millwall, 5 to 2 is your derby, 12 to 5 is draw. They need a new manager, that's what I can say about that. Uh, they come into this cut off a little bit, uh, but a win for Derby could get them up to 22nd spot in the table. Maybe, just maybe, start to believe they can climb out of this. As long as those teams are down there with not too far away, uh, there is still hope for Derby. On the flip side, Mill will come into this in 13th, and with them, they could go as high as 11th in a table uh, on this one. I've gone with Millwall to nick it 1 0 at home to take it to the bank. And next up, of course, with some big guns coming at you, of course, it is Watford up against Cardiff. Of course, got a big soft spot for Watford. They're doing all right. The last, uh, the least two side pitches are 39 times in the past. 13 wins for Watford, uh, 15 wins for Cardiff, and 11 bloody draws. The last six is three for the hosts, two for the Welsh, and one bloody draw. Last time pitcher that was in Wales is a 5 1 win for Watford. That was back in the Premier League. Uh, Gerard de Favalio on the score sheet with Troy Deeney as well with a couple of goals. Sol Bamba getting a constellation goal for Cardiff. Last time pitcher that at Vicarage Road, those same season, same Premier League, was a 3 2 win for Watford. So back-to-back -back games for, back-to-back uh, -back wins for Watford, heading into Stoffa Lovalu on the score sheet, Jose Holabas and Domingos Queen on the score sheet with Junior Hoylet, uh, Bobby Decova Reed on the score sheet for Cardiff. Heading into this Watford, they've actually won six of the last seven matches at home. They also scored at least three goals in the last three home matches heading into this. Unbeaten in the last six though, but just one winning, winning one in the past four. On the flip side, just one defeat in the past four for Cardiff. That was against Coventry uh, a couple of games back there. Look at the bookies' odds on this one then, shall we? What are we over the bookies' odds? Bookies' odds, bookies' odds, bookies' odds, bookies' odds, bookies' odds, bookies' odds. Uh, even seems for Watford, for the victory, 11 to 4 is your away win. That is Cardiff. 23-10 is your draw. Cardiff coming to this in 12th and a win for them. They could actually go as high as 11th in the same. Not major movements there. Watford, though, coming to this third and mathematically they could go... As well. I've gone with Watford on this one to take it. 2-0 win and again, potentially move top of the pops on this one. Next up, of course, we have Huddersfield up against QP. Ah, uh, these two side players are 35 times in the past. 13 wins apiece, 9 draws. Right back down in the middle. Uh, heading into this, the last 63 wins for Huddersfield. 1 for QPR and 2 bloody draws. Last I played each other was at the John Smith's Kirkley Sphere Stadium, McAlpine, whatever you want to call it. It was a 2 0 win for Huddersfield back in February 2020 pre lockdown. Of course, Ellis Kachunga on the score sheet with Steve Mooney as well, and a 2 0 comfortable win. Keep your eyes to win nine last 10 away matches. It was uh, two goals in the last three. Huddersfield are undefeated in the last five against uh, QPR. Uh, they come to this just one win in six, though, Huddersfield. On the flip side, uh, one win in five for QPR. In fact, two wins at six for QPR if you want to look at it that way. Um, yeah. Two wins at six. Not great. Not great form for either of the sides. A lot of draws knocking about there, though. Uh, six to five, Huddersfield on this one. Twelve to five is your draw. Um, Eleven to five is your away win. Heading into this, QPR coming to this in 17th. And for them, they could actually go as high as 12th. Uh, Huddersfield coming to this in 16th. And a win for them, they could also go as high as Swallow in the table. I've gone with a 1-0 win for Huddersfield to nick it and take it to the bank. And again, move on the table uh, as they grind out the results. Next, of course, we have the leaders, Norwich, up against uh, Sheffield Wednesday. It's the Jordan Rhodes Derby. Now, these two sides are the 57 times in the past. 17 wins for Norwich, 24 wins for uh, Sheffield Wednesday and 16 bloody draws. Uh, that's right. Last six, two wins apiece and two draws, of course, including a draw last around at Carrow, which was back in April 2019. It was a 2-2 two, two draw. Goal scores on the day, Fernando Forresteri and Stephen Fletcher on the score sheet for Wednesday. Marco Stieberman and Mario Varanic on the score sheet for Norwich. Heading into this, Sheffield Wednesday have actually drawn the last three matches in the Championship, but they come into this uh, one defeat of the past six, so a decent form, but not winning games. On the flip side, just one defeat of the past six for Norwich. That was against Luton. In fact, just back-to-back uh, -back games with a win. Uh, maybe a bit of a blip there for Norwich as, of course, they are the leaders. Heading into this, Norwish are actually 11 to 10 for the victory. They are the favourites. 25 is draw. 65 is your away win. That is the Pulis factor. Uh, Pulis' boys coming to this 23rd and win for them. They could actually go as high as 22nd. They can't get out of the drop zone on paper. On the flip side, Norwich lead this charge at the moment and win for them. Nothing could stop them if they win. But if they draw, guess what? The floodgates could open and they could fall all the way down to potentially, mathematically, to 8th out of the playoffs if they were to tumble. Uh, indeed. Of course, I've gone though with a 
uh, with a draw on this one. Oh, interesting. It's the pewdest factor. It is indeed. Next up, of course, we have Preston North End against Wickham. We've been grinding out the results. These two sides played each other six times in the past. Five wins for North End, nothing for Wickham, and uh, one draw. Um, da -da 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 -da. Last uh, time out was, of course, back in Wickham, back in the FA Cup in 2018. It was a 5-1 win for Preston. Last time played each other in league action at Deepdale's back in 2012. It was a 3-2 win for the Novice. Uh, Harry Bunn on the score sheet, Jack Jervis, and Paul Parry on the score sheet for Preston, with Mario Trotter with a couple of goals there for Wickham. Heading into this, Preston have actually won the last five matches against Wickham in all competitions. Uh, they've also lost uh, six of the last seven home matches, though. They come into this. Um, yeah, two wins of the past five for them. On the flip side, one win in uh, six for Wickham. Um, two defeats of the past six, if you want to look at it that way. And a more positive angle for, for Wickham. Heading into this book is odds. 5-4 to four on for Preston. They are your favourites. 3-1 is your draw. 3-1 to one is also your away win. Wickham coming to this in 22nd spot. But for them, they could actually go as high as 20th in the league. Preston coming to this in 15th. For the win for them, they could go as high as 12th in the league on this one. I've gone with a cheeky 2-0 win for Dobbers to take it to the bank. And again, uh, put another win in the, uh, in the another W in the win column. And get themselves moving up the table. Next up, of course, we have Stoke against Middlesbrough. Uh, Tony Pugliese Derby, I think, on this one. These two sides have played each other in the past 98 times. 35 wins for Stoke, 41 wins for Middlesbrough, and 22 draws. The last six, these one for Stoke, three for Middlesbrough, and two bloody draws. Last time they played each other was at the bet, 365. It was a tuna win for Butter in lockdown. Ashley Fletcher on the score sheet, Marcus Tavener as well, with Nick Powell getting a carded and sent off to the stands. Of course, Middlesbrough actually won the last three against Stoke, and they've also scored at least two goals in the last three heading into this. Uh, Borough, though, just two wins in the past six. On the flip side, Stoke one defeat in the past five, and that was against uh, Norwich, of course, uh, and a uh, and a five goal thriller heading into this though no bookies odds it is bet three six five stoke coming to this in eighth and mathematically they could go the box, the box. Oh, yeah. box with a big fat w and everything else going their way Middlesbrough coming to this in tenth and a win for them they could actually go as high as second in the tier that's right uh pal uh this one's tough on this one i'm gonna go with a draw the warnock factor here and of course stoke at home will make this a bit of a drab one uh but again point in the bag moving on to the next one and wrapping it up it's swansea city against luton town swansea uh these two side pitch are the 39 times in the past 14 wins for Swansea uh, 18 wins for Luton and 17 draws on the last six he's four for Swansea two for Luton and no draws last time I picture that in Wales was a 1-0 win for Luton that's right back in June 2020 lockdown James Collins with a one and only goal Jordan Caddick uh, Gaddick getting himself sent off on that one Swansea come to this uh, one defeat the past four on the flip side one defeat the past six for Luton that was against uh, Cardiff a couple games back grinding out the results Luton Town at the moment Bucky's odds on this one. Uh, Swansea are your favourites 2013 on for the victory. 14 to 5 is your draw. 4 to 1 is your away win. Uh, Luton coming to this in 11th, and if they win, they could go as high as 8th. On the flip side, Swansea come to this in 7th. And mathematically, they could go. Top the boss, top the boss. Oh, yeah. Top the With a W and everything else going their way, it's going to ask a tall order for them to do just that. I think they'll get part one of it, and that'll be the win over Luton Town. 2 0 win to potentially put them in the conversation to go top of the pops. What have I got on this one? If Marvel picks come on in, which I bloody well hope so, this is what the table will look like at the end of it. Watford will be your new leaders. Bristol City will be up to second. Swansea, Norwich, Bournemouth, and Reading make up your power six rowers. No movement into ninth spot still, but a win away from the top five, of course. And again, another monstrous game on the horizon against Bristol City. As of a recording, or as of right now, on paper, Derby, Wickham, and Rotherham going down. But of course, you've got to bear in Sheffield Wednesday will be realistically in there on paper. But that's what I think will happen this time out, out in the Championship. Be sure to get your picks in nice and early for the Championship Prediction League. And that's it. That's all I've got for you today. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that thumbs up. And if you're new, bang the old subscribe and keep you bang up all things. Black and Rose later. Championship later. Woo! Boop, 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 we got it all here. In the bloody house. That's right. No one roof ski. Uh, check out the links down below if you want to support the channel another way. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Twitch. I'm on Facebook. I'm trying to get my numbers up on all those things. So just do me a do me a solid. Just go to all of them and smash the follows, likes, whatever it is to 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 get my numbers up there. Because the more numbers, the bigger the numbers, the, the more likelihood that well, this channel can get out there. More perks and privileges, more opportunities will open up for me, for you, and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, we can kick this channel onto another level. And again, if you want to kick it on another level and go that extra push, you could become the latest member of the Patreon gang. We're trying to get up to twenty. Five. We're as of recording. Let's do a quick check. I think I'm on 19. We took a we took a tumble. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, it, it just happens. I guess you know uh, people that can only. We're actually down 80. Bloody Nora! I don't bloody. We're, we're losing them. We're losing like it's uh, it's going like a like a, a fish in a fish market. I don't know. We're losing them badly. Uh, so I'm trying to get my numbers up there. So I do appreciate you guys, uh, patron wise. Uh, so if anyone out there wants to get those numbers back up to 20, 25, that'd be great. Uh, but until then, though, be sure to give the video some love and smash the thumbs up, smash the subscribe, of course. Uh, keep your bang after With all things Black and Rose later, championship rain, whoa, football related, we got it all here. Under one Ruski. Until then, though, I'll be back again, of course, pretty, pretty soon with the next round of matches. Of course, it just keeps on coming out of the championship. Keeps on coming, keeps on snowing, keeps on predicting. Until then, I'm